spot today we have the brazen bull. Sometimes also referred to as the Sicilian bull, this punishment method was created by the ancient Greeks. Basically, they would start by creating a sort of device that was made out of bronze and it was shaped like an actual bull. This bronze sculpture was large enough to fit a person inside, which is an important piece of information because that is exactly what they would do. Once the person was locked inside, a fire would then be set underneath the bronze bull. Of course, like we just learned with the rat trap, this of course would quickly create a very hot environment for the person who was inside. This time, it's not rats, but rather a human who would slowly be roasted to death, essentially in the bronze belly of the bull. Honestly, we're only at number 9 and I already feel sick, so let's keep going. In our number 8 spot today, we have flaying. Well, you've probably heard this word at some point or another, so do I really need to explain it? I guess that's my job, so here goes. Flaying is skinning. It's a slow and extremely painful method of removing skin from the body, usually with the attempt to keep it all intact. Yeah, I think that was probably too much information. Ew. In the early ages, this was a popular method of punishment or a means by which to get a confession, and depending on how far they went, the person may live after or not. Everything on this list is terrible. It's in no particular order. How could I possibly rank these? In our number 7 spot today, we have the breaking wheel. Alright folks, buckle up for this one that was once used as a method of capital punishment. This method was most commonly used in Europe from antiquity through the Middle Ages and into the early modern period. This was a super simple simple device and it really was just a wheel, but boy this one was terrible. There are two different methods with the breaking wheel, either the person would be broken on the wheel or by the wheel. So basically, excuse the gruesome descriptions, but if you were broken by the wheel, basically you'd just be placed belly down on a board and then the wheel was slammed down twice on each arm and leg and then on your spine. You'd then be tied to the wheel and hammered to a pole and the pole would be put up for the victim to be left there to die. Yeah, I know, I said it was gruesome and we still have another one to get through. Being broken on the wheel involved the limbs of the victim being tied to the wheel and then smashed with a club, and in some places the wheel would spin. Just to add a little extra terribleness, the number and the sequence in which the smashes were distributed were not random however, as they were actually determined in court at sentencing. Alright guys, we're almost halfway, so let's keep trucking along. <laughs> in our number 6 spot today, we have death by boiling. Not to be confused with being cooked alive in the bronze bull, this is similar but very different. Possibly worse, but again, who knows? How could we possibly tell? This one is exactly what it sounds like, but it could involve either water or or oil, and that is one where I feel like I can tell which one would be worse. I'm gonna say oil! I mean, you know when you're frying something up on the stove, you either come prepared with a shield for the popping oil or it's every man for themselves. Trying to make a dumpling is now a job for only the SWAT team. This one actually wasn't a super popular method however, and you wanna know why? Not enough blood. Okay, yeah, sorry Jigsaw, next time we'll get right on that for you. In our number 5 spot today we have The Rack. This one is probably one of the most popular on this whole list, which I can't even believe I just said. Basically, the rack was a device that was made out of a wooden rectangle as a frame. The person being punished would have their limbs attached to four sides with chains, and then the people doing the punishing, with the help of rollers and pulleys, would stretch out the person till either their limbs were torn clean off from the body, or they just got pulled out from their sockets and couldn't be used anymore. I literally got goosebumps typing up this script. I can't imagine being around in a time when people used to do this. And sometimes it would be like in the town square. Imagine you're just trying to get some fresh air but as you're strolling you just happen upon this terrifying scene. I don't know you guys, this list is just the worst. In our number 4 spot today we have crucifixion. This one is obviously quite well known because of its religious affiliations as this is what is said to have been done to Jesus Christ. This method of punishment involved the person being nailed to a large wooden block or in the case of Jesus, a cross. After being nailed to this block the person is then left out in public for people to be able to witness the slow and painful death they are about to experience. Although the story of Jesus has made this form of punishment well known in our modern society, it was actually very
very popular and there were many more people who were unfortunately subjected to it. Part of the reason for its popularity was because of the terror it created and the fear it instilled in people who broke the law. I mean, I'm sure there was at least one person who thought twice about committing a crime after seeing a public crucifixion. In our number 3 spot today we have sensory deprivation. We've talked about quite a few physical punishments from history today, but those are not the only kind, so let's take a second to talk about a messed up form of psychological punishment. This specific punishment is often referred to as white torture, and it is a type of sensory deprivation done to prisoners. This is when their cell, clothes, and even their food are entirely white. All of the guards wear white, all of the lights are on 24-7, and no one speaks any words. This is to take away as much sensory stimulation as possible. One of the most famous cases of this was that of Amir Fakhravar, who was subjected to this sort of thing for 8 months in 2004. After his release, even he himself stated that he was just not a normal person anymore. Surviving some of the other punishments that we've talked about today would certainly leave someone with physical scars, but this one would leave you with scars that can't be seen, and those are just as bad. In our number 2 spot today we have burning at the stake. Ah uh, yes, fire. The red flower, as they call it in the jungle book. In the early ages, people loved a good fire, and I'm not talking about the nice one we all sit around with our friends and family while we make s'mores and recant old tales. No, of course, I am instead talking about burning someone at the stake. Made famous by the multitude of witch hunts and trials of the past, burning someone at the stake was a popular form of punishment for those who were accused of treason or witchcraft. It was popular for reasons similar to crucifixion because burning someone at the stake was both a spectacle for the dark souls who would want to watch something like that, but it was also a warning to all those out there. In our number one spot today we have sawing. Okay, this one pretty much always ended in death, so buckle up. This method was used in different portions of the world, but was mostly seen in Rome, Spain, and some portions of Asia. This is another straightforward one, unfortunately. This would be done to a criminal who had been given the sentence of capital punishment, and it basically just involves them getting sawed in half. That's it! I'm not exactly sure what else to say to be completely honest. It is said that sometimes the sawing was transversely, and sometimes it was lengthwise, and to that I say, does it even matter? There's a weirdly detailed history about this one, so I think we can all just take a moment of gratitude that these don't exist anymore, and that we don't do this. Because it sounds absolutely terrible. Starting off in our number 10 spot we have the Blood Eagle. This messed up thing was a ritual method of execution that was detailed in late skaldic poetry. In the two instances where this horrible punishment was mentioned, the victims, who both happened to be members of the royal family, were placed in the prone position. So laying flat on their tummies, they had their ribs severed from their spine using a sharp tool, and then they had their lungs pulled out through the opening to create a sort of super messed up, really scary and terrifying pair of wings. Both instances where this insane punishment is said to have happened, the person was being punished for patricide or for killing their own father, so I guess don't do that? I'm not sure what the takeaway from this one is other than, wow, that sounds horrible, I'm glad we don't do that anymore, I really love my dad. <laughs> In our number 9 spot today we have the pair of anguish. I don't really like regular pears all that much, but this one definitely sounds like the worst pear probably ever. Like even worse than the one that's got brown spots all over it. The pear of anguish was also known as the choke pear or mouth pear, and I wish we could just stop here and I could let you use your own weird imagination, but we'll keep moseying on through. This torture machine consisted of a metal body that was obviously shaped like a pear normally, but it was divided into different segments and these segments could be spread apart by the simple turning of a screw. So basically this pear would be put into any kind of orifice, like the mouth, and then it would be slowly expanded and you see where this is going. Do I need to continue? Alright, we're done number 9. Let's keep rolling along. I'm uncomfortable already. In our number 8 spot today we have the water drip. This one, also referred to as the dripping machine, was a form of mental torture. I know some of these ones that are more psychological don't seem as bad as the horrible forms of physical punishment we've talked about, but that's not necessarily true. This punishment involved cold water which would slowly be dripped onto a person's scalp, forehead and face for a prolonged period of time. The pattern of the drops was irregular and because the water was cold it was obviously quite jarring which would cause a person's anxiety to spike as they try and anticipate the next drip. 
Okay, if this one wasn't gruesome enough for you, let me add one more kind of water punishment in here for good measure. We also have the forced ingestion of water, which is, I mean, Exactly that. Forcing someone to drink too much water that they eventually aspirate on it or die from water intoxication, which yes, is a real thing. In our number seven spot today, we have Mazatello. This one was a method of capital punishment that was occasionally used by the Papal States for only some of the most terrible crimes or crimes that were considered especially loathsome. Basically, the person who was being executed would be led to a scaffold that was located in the public square because they didn't have Netflix back then, so instead they just watched people die. I don't know, it was weird. I'll keep watching Nailed It instead. But anyway, the person would be accompanied by a priest and then on this scaffold there would be a coffin and a masked executioner who was dressed in all black. A prayer would be said for the soul of the condemned and then when the time came the executioner would swing a mallet into the air and then bring it down on the head of the prisoner. Sometimes this one blow would be enough to take their lives and sometimes it would merely render them unconscious which would then lead to their throat being cut. None of these sound good. This one sucks so bad. I feel bad giving you guys this information. Next video, can it be like top 10 nice, cool, wonderful flowers or something like that? In our number six spot today, we have immurement. This is an unusual form of punishment and boy it is cruel. Maybe not quite as gruesome and gory as some of the others today, but this one would have been equally if not more terrifying. How am I to know? Like I said last time, how could I ever rank these in any kind of order? They're all just so bad. <laughs> This is a form of imprisonment that is basically just when a person is sealed within an enclosure that has no exits. While this would surely be a very effective form of psychological torment, this is usually a method that resulted in death. Most instances included people being shut away in small confined spaces such as a coffin, and the prisoner is usually left to pass away from starvation or dehydration. This form of punishment is different from being buried alive because of how the person passes away, since being buried alive usually results in asphyxiation. Okay guys, we're close to being halfway through, we can do it. In our number five spot today we have neck lacing. Suddenly I have a desire to never wear jewelry again after learning about this one. Neck lacing is a terrifying practice that involves a rubber tire and unfortunately a human being, obviously. The rubber tire is filled with petrol which is then put around the victim's chest and arms and then set ablaze. Yeah, what the heck? I feel like I'm describing a terrible scary mob sort of a movie right now but sadly I'm just talking about things people have actually done to each other in real life. I mean, I'm sure you can figure out what happens next, but it is said that this method can take up to 20 minutes for someone to pass away from, and they're just left suffering in the meantime. How horrible. Just like everything else on this list, and it only gets worse. Maybe? I don't know about worse, but it definitely doesn't get better. In our number four spot today, we have Molten Metal. Okay, okay, there's gotta be a point where I draw the line, right? I guess not, because you weirdos like to hear about these horribly insane punishments, and I'm here to deliver you what you want, so let's dive right into this whole batch of terrible. This absolutely skin-crawling punishment was a form of capital punishment because there is absolutely no way you'd be surviving after this. While gruesome, this punishment has a fairly simple explanation. Basically, they just poured molten metal or super, super hot liquid metal down the throat of the person being executed. I'll tell you what, that'll certainly do the trick. Usually during this punishment they would do things to ensure that your throat would be open during the pouring of the hot hot metal, and to that I have to ask, does it matter? That pain would be excruciating no matter what, but hey, people of the past loved a horrifying spectacle so what am I to do? In our number 3 spot today we have Impalement. This is another one that was highly requested by you guys which makes me wonder, who have you been hanging out with? Vlad the Third, also known as Vlad the Impaler or something? Okay, that wasn't funny, but seriously, I'm a little worried about you. Anyway, this was a popular form of punishment for a long time and was most commonly used as a response to crimes against the state, although Mr. Vlad we just mentioned basically just did it to everyone he didn't like, so I suppose to each their own. Impalement was a method of both torture and execution that involved slowly driving a stake or pole or spear or hook or whatever through a person in order to completely or partially perforate the torso. You can impale someone vertically or horizontally if you want to spice it up and don't worry, it'll suck either way. 
In some situations, the impaled person would then be put on display for others to see. Sometimes this was used as a warning, and other times it was just because they could. Isn't history fun? Mr. G never taught me this in grade 10. In our number two spot today, we have drawn and quartered. All right, you guys asked for this one, and I am nothing if not a great listener, so. Here we go. This was a popular form of punishment and became the statutory penalty for men who were convicted of high treason in the Kingdom of England from 1352, although this form of punishment certainly existed well before that. Basically, whoever the convicted was, they would be secured to some sort of a wooden panel and then drawn by horse to wherever this thing was going down. That wasn't said casually to make light of this horrible punishment, I'm just uncomfy so I'm trying to keep it cool and casual. So once at the place of execution, the person would then be hanged, almost to the point of losing their life, but from there they would be emasculated, for lack of a better term, disemboweled, beheaded, and then quartered or chopped into four pieces. All right, and because this simply wasn't enough for some insane reason, the pieces would then be displayed in prominent places across the country. Like, no, I don't want to see someone's upper right quadrant while I'm going for breakfast. I'll pass on that. Thank you so much, though. In our number one spot today, we have scaphism. All right, you guys, this one is also known as the boats or being eaten alive or really whatever way you swing it, it absolutely sucks so badly. This is an ancient method of execution that involved putting someone sandwiched between two boats that are stacked on top of one another. From here, they'll feed the person and cover them in milk and honey and then just leave them. From here, the substances on and in the person will fester and attract bugs and other small vermin, which will then basically eat that person who can't fend for themselves alive. Not only would being eaten alive be one of the worst ways to go, but this process was incredibly lengthy and ensured the person suffered for a long time. Like we're talking over 10 days here. In one of the first written mentions of scaphism, which comes from Plutarch, while talking about the execution of Mithridates, he said, quote, when the man is manifestly dead, the uppermost boat being taken off, they find his flesh devoured, and swarms of such noisome creatures preying upon, and, as it were, growing to his inwards. In this way, Mithridates, after suffering for 17 days, at last expired. So uh, yeah, anyway, if Plutarch wants to pay for my therapy after that, I think I'd be really grateful. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have the re-education experiments. This is a type of punishment that was seen in a prison in Romania that was built in the late 1930s. This prison was called the Potesti prison and the punishment is called the re-education experiments. Basically, this was a three-step process intended to brainwash prisoners into giving up their religious and political beliefs and to alter their personality to a point where they would be completely obedient. The first step was known as external unmasking and it involved torment being used with interrogating the prisoners. This led to the prisoners revealing everything about themselves and even confessing to crimes they didn't commit. The second stage was called internal unmasking which involved making the prisoners give the names of people who were kind or lenient to them in the early interrogations. The third phase is called public moral unmasking and it involves being humiliated in public as well as having to renounce their entire belief system. As an example, Christians would be dressed up as Christ and made to disgrace religious texts and sacred symbols. Prisoners would have their heads dunked into buckets of urine or worse. It gets worse from here, but I'll save you the disgusting details. The prison ended up being closed in 1952 and some of the people who took part and led these horrible things ended up being executed for their crimes. In our number 9 spot today we have visitation. Rather than a specific punishment, this is more so just a horrible condition that prisoners at this prison have to endure. The TR Bakir prison is located in Turkey and it is well known for the absurd amount of human rights violations. Apparently conditions in this prison are so bad that people would rather take their own lives than continue living under the psychological and physical distress that this location causes. One of the worst parts is in reference to those who have their families visit them while they're in the prison. It isn't exactly that common, as this place certainly isn't the most welcoming, but when it does happen, the families dare not speak a word. This is because, should they, these words might come back to be used as punishment against those in prison. In our number 8 spot today, we have bad conditions. This is another one of those conditions that is from one specific 
specific prison rather than a punishment, but I am sure this isn't the only place where this exists. Gitarama Prison, which is located in Rwanda, is the most overcrowded prison in the world. It is said that the prison houses 7,000 inmates, although it was only built to hold 400. Because of the extreme level of overcrowding, the conditions at this prison are exceptionally poor. This means that men and women at the prison are standing barefoot on the filthy ground all day, which many times causes their feet to rot and many require amputation. This is already terrible enough, but to make matters even worse, there is only one full-time doctor for the entire prison. This means that many of the inmates pass away before they can get the treatment that they need. It is said that this prison sees about half a dozen deaths every day. In our number 7 spot today, we have hooding. This is one that might not seem all that terrible on the surface, but that certainly is not the case at all. Hooding is basically the practice of putting a hood over the entire head of the prisoner. Not only is this dangerous, especially when the hands are also bound or in handcuffs, but it is also thought to be an act of torment due to the sensory deprivation it causes. Hooding is said to cause disorientation, isolation, and dread, and sometimes in the worst scenarios, it is used during interrogation to increase confusion or during other physical punishments so as to increase anxiety as to where the blows will land. This method is also sometimes used when there's groups of prisoners so that an interrogator can put them up against each other in a multitude of ways and they will have no way to confirm the truth of it. In our number 6 spot today we have music. Normally music is a pleasant, lovely experience that really brings people together, but sometimes it's used as a sort of weapon. What's called no touch torment is considered by many to be more humane than some of the other things we've talked about today, but that doesn't mean it isn't cruel or effective as it is definitely both. Sometimes this can be done in the form of playing a song repeated over and over again, and sometimes it's through the use of extremely loud music, and sometimes it's just a combination of the two. This has been seen as a method in military prisons, and usually this is mixed with other things such as sleep deprivation, controlling the temperature of interrogation rooms, and violating the prisoner's religious or cultural beliefs. Even though the prisoner is not physically harmed, human rights activists still find these techniques to be a violation of human rights. In our number 5 spot today we have medication. This is something that is more commonly seen in military prisons or detention centers such as Guantanamo Bay rather than federal or state ones. Basically, this is the force feeding of illicit or psychoactive chemicals to prisoners, some of whom are then interrogated afterwards. I absolutely do not have to explain why this is unacceptable practice, as it is not only a violation of medical ethics, but also a violation of human rights. Many times these sorts of chemicals are given without the prisoners being aware of what it is, and sometimes not even being aware that they are ingesting it at all. There was a huge scandal about this one when documents became declassified, and it was released that this was something that was going on at Guantanamo Bay. Some of those being kept here were dosed with a heavy psychoactive medication that is known to make a person groggy and then subjected to interrogation afterwards. In our number 4 spot today we have water. There isn't just one way that water can be used as a punishment, but perhaps the most well known and one of the most unsettling is water boarding. Basically this is the practice of pouring water on a cloth that has been placed over someone's face, covering their mouth and nose. Of course this ends up making breathing exceptionally difficult, if not impossible. Usually this is done intermittently throughout some sort of questioning or interrogation so as to prevent death, but that is unfortunately not always the case. This is a method that has been seen and used all over the world, but in more recent years certain areas have placed bans on it being used in any sort of prison setting because of the severity of the method and its potentially lethal effect. In our number 3 spot today we have work. Camp 22 is a concentration camp that is located in North Korea. Although it has been in operation since 1965, it was kept a secret for decades until satellite imagery revealed the dark truths. It is said that this camp holds over 50,000 men and women and their families because sometimes, depending on the person and the crime, their entire family could be arrested for a crime that they committed. Those held at these camps are malnourished and they live in terrible conditions where they are often physically punished, but here there is another sort of activity that they are forced to do. Those who are held at this camp are also forced to work in the fields and the mines for 12 hours a day at least every single day. They work under grueling conditions for no gain, only the gain of those running the camp, only to return back in the evenings to even worse conditions and treatment. In our number 2 spot today we have physical punishments. Okay, 
This of course had to be on the list today as this is probably the most common form of punishment for prisoners everywhere. When I say physical punishments, of course many of these are, but I'm talking about hitting or striking or other forms of corporal punishment on this one. Sometimes this comes from those who have authority at the prison and sometimes this comes by way of other prisoners. Many places have of course banned this sort of behavior, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't happen. It is said by penal reform groups that overcrowding and understaffing is the biggest contributing factor to this sort of punishment. This is because sometimes overcrowding can cause many people to be placed into one cell at a time, which causes high tensions and a lack of privacy. Other times, the understaffed guards are more defensive and it leads to an increase in this sort of behavior. In our number one spot today, we have no sewage. Back with some more of the worst prison conditions I've ever heard of, this time we are taking a trip over to Mendoza Prison, which is located in Argentina. This prison is another one that is way too overcrowded with about three times the max capacity of inmates. At this prison, it isn't unusual to see as many as five inmates cramped into a cell that only measures four square meters. With this amount of overcrowding, you can imagine what a nightmare it is to not have a proper sewage facility either. This would be terrifying and also dangerous even if they were at the proper capacity, so I can't imagine with this kind of overcrowding. Inmates here are forced to use plastic bags and bottles as their washroom, and there's no kind of medical care for them at all. It is likely that the only time the inmates here are going to see a doctor is if they have already passed away, which truly is the most horrifying thing. Number 10, Greek fire. Yeah, we'll kick this list off with a blazing mystery. Greek fire has had scholars and pyromaniacs stumped for decades. How did ancient warriors blast fire at each other's ships before Elon Musk ever existed? I don't understand. Where did these flamethrowers come from? This powerful incendiary weapon was used during the seventh century, more commonly by the Byzantine Empire. That was, you know, they were on the top of their game with this one. Can't imagine how they wouldn't be. Imagine being the first human being to weaponize fire. How terrifying is that? It's been referred to as Roman fire or sticky fire and water that was trying to be used to extinguish the flames. Well, that ended up making it a hell of a lot worse. So many sources now realize that the trick here was to use combustible substances, sulfur, petroleum. They would blast it from a distance. And the only way to put out Greek fire was copious amounts of sand, vinegar, or urine. Yeah, the third option there, no problem. We got tons of that on board. No sweat, especially when a Greek fire syringe is facing your ship. Yeah, we got a lot of urine on standby. Just say the word, Captain, easy peasy. I'm like, are we ready? I'm pretty ready, I'm shaking. Number nine. Crucifixion. This one is obviously quite well known as this is what is said to have been done to one Jesus Christ. Yeah, the method of punishment involved the person being nailed to a large wooden block or in the case of one Jesus Christ, it would be a cross. Now after being nailed to the block, the person is then left out in public for people to just watch and witness the slow and painful death that they are about to experience. It's horrible. Humans are absolutely disgusting. Although the story of Jesus has made this form of punishment well known in our modern society after the fact, it was actually very popular in their many more people who were unfortunately subjected to this punishment. And part of the reason for its popularity was because of the terror that it created and the fear that it instilled in the people that broke the law. Yeah, you don't say. I'm sure I'd think twice before stealing that bread. Looking at this guy, I'd be like, what? What did he do? Number eight, burning at the stake. Oh yeah, a little bit worse. In the early ages, people loved a good fire. And I'm not talking about the nice one that we all sit around with our friends and family while we all share tall tales. No, of course I'm talking about, you know, burning somebody publicly at the stake. Like the previous point, but just now with fire, because humans are sick. Made famous by the multitude of witch hunts and trials of the past, burning somebody at the stake was a popular form of punishment for those who were accused of treason and or witchcraft. It was popular for reasons similar to crucifixion because burning somebody at the stake was both a spectacle for the dark souls who wanted to witness, but it was also a warning to all the others out there. Number seven. Sawing. This one always ended up in death in one way or another, so yeah, buckle up, it's pretty bad. I should have put this at number two or one, my god. This method was used in different portions of the world, but it was mostly seen in Rome, Spain, and some portions of Asia. Now, this is another straightforward one, unfortunately. You know what I mean? You ever seen the terrifier? It's like that. This would be done to a criminal who had been given the sentence of capital punishment, and it basically, yeah, it just involves them getting sawed in half. That's it. I'm not exactly sure what else to say, to be completely honest. I'd love to fill some time and talk about details, but then we'd get demonetized. So I'm like, yeah, they'd get sawed. Picture it. It's said that sometimes the sawing was actually done lengthwise. Not here, but rather, you know, down here. Would you rather get sawed at the X axis or at the Y axis? I don't think it matters at that point, really. You're dead. Number six, 
the breaking wheel. Okay, this one isn't even creative. You know what I mean? It's just horrible. People just, yeah, here we go. The breaking wheel is literally just a large disc, a pirate ship wheel almost, where somebody is tied to it. And then everybody else walks in and then just, you know, hammers them over and over again because humans, I guess. But of course, since we're talking about medieval times here, everything has to be a show, right? Once the accused was beaten and presumed dead, the wheel would then lift up and then turn slowly just to show everybody what's up. In case you couldn't get a good view, there you go. Now you got one. He's like Usher, just rising in the middle of a concert and then turning around. It's like, what? This is, how do we even do this? Another way to use the braking wheel, yeah, there was more than one, again, creative folks back then. The other way is they would tie a person to the wheel and then continue to rotate it so that all the ropes would get tighter and tighter. It was, it was kind of like the rack, but with a twist. Pun intended. Number five, death by boiling. Again, not many details here to explain from a historical standpoint. Death by boiling. Yep, that's it. Anatomically, this one also sucked, okay? This one is exactly what it sounds like, but it can involve either water or oil. And this is one where I definitely know which one's gonna be worse. I'm gonna say oil, I'm definitely gonna say oil here. If you've ever worked in a kitchen, you're probably also agreeing with me right now. This one actually wasn't super popular back in the day, and you wanna know why? Not enough blood. Yeah, not showy enough. Come back with some pyrotechnics. Lift the guy up on a wheel. Do something cool. I don't know. Involve us. Involve the crowd. One guy was probably in the back like, ah, oh, boring. Let's get out of here. This one sucks. Number four, flaying. Okay, you've probably heard of this one at some point or another, so do I really have to explain it? I do? Okay. Flaying is skinning. It's a slow and extremely painful method of removing one's skin from one's body, usually with the attempts, hopefully, to keep it all intact. Best little skin suit there. I'm gonna puke for sure after I'm done this video. In the early ages, this was a popular method of punishment or a means by which to get a confession. And depending on how far they went, this is a very famous method used in Mesopotamia. And sometimes instead of, you know, good old skinning, they instead would remove chunks of flesh. So that's, honestly, I'm not sure which seems worse. I would go with the chunks. Probably Probably the chunks, right? I guess there doesn't have to be a winner. It could just be all bad. That's also an option. Number three, water. Taking a step away from the worst physical thing one could possibly go through, let's take a look at now at how far the mind will go before it too breaks. Sensory deprivation is still around today in terms of punishments. In fact, there's actually many who pay for it. They lay in a dark tub full of salt and they float and it's a magical experience, right? Your senses, they're powerful, especially combined with water. So a dripping machine where water would just drip on you, that's, it doesn't sound bad, but really it was the worst punishment out there. It's one of the worst ones. Ice cold water dripping on your forehead over and over for hours and hours. It's one of the worst. Everybody's heard about this in some way. In medieval times, they would do this as well, but the drops would be at different times, so you couldn't predict it which would drive you crazy, right? I'm so anxious. This is the worst punishment, I think, on the list somehow. In medieval times, they would tie you down and then using a horn, like a big ass funnel, they would pour nine pints of water down your throat. So either this or that. Either water is gonna you up in some way, shape, or form. Water being used for punishment is pretty wild, especially when we need it to survive. It's kind of twisted. Who thought of that, right? Number two, keel hauling. Not to be confused with Kegels. That's a very, very different thing. My autocorrect told me this morning. It's like, hey, not the same thing. You meant key hauling. And I'm like, absolutely. Key hauling was reserved for the worst of the worst at sea. Yeah, we gotta punish, but sometimes we're gonna be on the road, right? We gotta improvise. This was used by pirates for sailors who disobey orders and whatnot. Now the victim would be suspended by a rope, either with rocks or weights around their ankles. They would be hung off the front of the ship. Then they're lowered to the keel of the ship where all the sharp barnacles and waves and everything else lives. And then at that point, they would get dragged all around the boat. Water plus pain, it's a lot here. It's a deadly combination. Anything to do with barnacles and the sea, no chance. I'll tell you anything, Blackbeard. If Blackbeard was like, here's a messed up fish, I'd be like, gross, I'll tell you anything. I don't like the ocean. And finally, number one, medieval house special. Let's end on a fun, light one, okay? That way we can all sleep. Deal? Deal. Hit that thumbs up. We're feeling a little bit better. Many of these ale brewers back in medieval times were all women, and that's probably because men were too busy drinking it in the basement. Baking bread was not freely permitted, but making ale in your basement was totally okay. Yeah, we went from making ale in our living rooms to banning alcohol. Odd, right? So the higher ups at this point, these noble lords, they wouldn't care if you made ale and had a block party, but if you were to make weak ale or it was improperly measured and then improperly distributed, then and only then would you get a fine. That's like the police busting your house party, but only when they get there, they turn the music up and then congratulate you on a proper barrel of White Claw. They're like, ah, oh, yes, black cherry, the finest. They sip it, it's improperly distilled. They're like, all right, 
Put your hands behind your back. Get the out of here. If you make a weak ale, you're going to jail. Number 10, tattooing. Nowadays, we see tattoos as a way to express ourselves and be creative. We choose what we want it to look like and say, but that's not how it worked in ancient China. One of their punishments was tattooing, permanent markings that were made on the criminal's face or other visible parts of the body, usually words that describe their misdemeanors or a location of their exile or hard labor camp. These tattoos permanently and very visibly marked out their crimes for the rest of their lives. So even if you were innocent or served your time, people would know that you were a criminal and what you did. It would follow you for the rest of your life and you would not be treated well because of it. I feel like this could be more helpful for us nowadays than being put up on a registry like some criminals are put on today, but just imagine one of your biggest mistakes being written out on your skin forever. That's rough. Number 9, Rhinotomy. I know what you're thinking, Emily, what is Rhinomani? Well, my friends, rhinomani is mutilation, usually amputation, of the nose. So yeah, they just chop your nose off. And of course, they'd make it the most painful thing ever. You were awake and there was no pain medicine and you were scarred for life, both physically, emotionally, and mentally. But because of blades and bloodletting were involved, Rhinotomy often resulted in death because of attendant infection. I feel like if one of my friends had this happen to them, I would always make a joke, I got your nose, which they probably wouldn't like. Now, this penalty was heavier than tattooing, and it was a common penalty for officials and soldiers, for instance, if the latter were not able to conquer a besieged city. Occasionally, the punishment of cutting off the nose was combined with other pains. It was later abolished and replaced with the punishment of cutting off the nose nose by 300 blows with a light stick, which is just as bad. Number 8, UA. What does UA mean? Well, it means amputation. Now, there were variations of punishment for different periods where the choice of the foot removed depended on the severity of the crimes committed. Amputation of the right foot for very serious crimes and the left for lighter offenses. Scientists in Beijing announced the discovery of an almost 3,000 year old skeleton of a young woman whose foot had been amputated. The findings, say researchers, is rare evidence for the practice of UA. It is they say the earliest archaeological evidence for the practice. Various clues hint that the woman's foot was cut off as UA, her bones showed no signs of any disease that could have made such an amputation necessary, and it seemed the injury was roughly made, rather than with the precision of a medical amputation. At the time the woman was living, up to 500 different offenses could result in having a foot amputated, including rebelling, cheating, stealing, and even climbing over certain gates. I can't imagine getting your foot cut off and not even being able to choose which one you lose. If you had to choose, which foot would you prefer to get cut off, left or right? Let me know in the comments down below, and I think I'd go with my left foot. It's the weaker of the two. Number 7, Neck Tower. The neck tower was a very tall and narrow tower where the offender would be locked inside. The criminal's hands and feet were shackled and they could only stand on a tower of rocks. Each day someone removed one or two stones and before long the offender died of strangulation. This is just sick. I couldn't imagine the anxiety that would come along with that. Having to stand for such a long time and just wait to die would be horrible. It would be better if it was done quickly. Also, the addition of public humiliation is another addition to this punishment. Number 6. Exile Exile was a common punishment. Delinquents were sent to remote border regions where they served in military garrisons, in compulsory labor, or as soldiers. Reports about exile in the wilderness are found in the oldest history books. Criminals were sent up to 1,000 kilometers away and forced to work. Exile could happen if you married someone who was not Chinese, and they also punished thieves in this manner. There were three levels of this, 1,000 lai, 1,500 lai, and 2,000 lai, and the period of the sentence ranged from two years to three years. Now to understand better, 1,000 lai is about 500 kilometers and just over 300 miles. Later on, the Tang Dynasty extended the distances by a thousand lai each, but reduced the time of the exile, with the shortest counting one full year of labor, mainly in military garrisons in the borderland. 
but it was also possible to redeem the penalty of exile by donating copper to the authorities. This was allowed because the state needed copper, so there was essentially a way to get out of it, which I think isn't really fair. Number 5. Canig Canig was a device consisting of a large wooden collar that was placed around the neck of offenders. In addition, the criminal would have to wear the canig, which varied in weight depending on the severity of their crimes. A list of their past crimes would be attached to the wooden collar most of the time as well. Now, this would be very annoying for sleeping or even trying to put on your clothes. This had several effects. Number one was shame. Apart from the obvious sign you've done something wrong, papers noting your crime would be stuck on the boards, making them clear to passerbys. Number two, pain. Wearing the heavy wooden boards was very uncomfortable. And number three, hunger. The board was large enough that you couldn't reach your mouth with your hand, so you had to rely on others to feed you. This sounds absolutely terrible. Number four, death by a thousand cuts. You know, this isn't just a Taylor Swift song, right? It was a real punishment. This was a long and painful form of execution reserved for the most severe crimes such as treason. The criminal would be tied to a post and authorities would cut incisions on their body. The punishment involved flaying pieces of skin, removing muscles, and even body parts to maximize the pain. The sentence kept the organs functioning and ranged from 8 to 120 cuts. This punishment worked on three levels as a form of public humiliation, as a slow and lingering death, and as a punishment after death. While it's difficult to obtain the accurate details of how the executions took place, they generally consisted of cuts to the arms, legs, and chest, leading to amputation of the limbs, followed by decapitation or stab to the heart. If your crime was less serious or the executioner merciful, the first cut would be to the throat, causing death. Subsequent cuts served solely to dismember the corpse. All I gotta say is, ouch. Number three, slow drip. Slow drip was a type of torment that was very slow, sometimes painful, and mentally destabilizing. It is a process in which cold water is slowly dripped onto the scalp, forehead, or face for a prolonged period of time. The process causes fear and mental deterioration in the subject. The pattern of the drops is often irregular and the cold sensation jarring, which causes anxiety as the person tries to anticipate the next drip. It's not clear why officials did this, but sometimes the drops would contain acid. The acid would slowly burn through the skin and into the brain and the victim would eventually go insane. That wasn't all though, the victim would be stripped of their clothes, shown to the public, then be a victim to the torment. They would be driven insane while bystanders watched, mocked, and laughed at them. The victims could see each drop coming and after a long duration of time were gradually driven frantic to the point of insanity, usually because they were led to believe that a hollow or severe ulcer would develop there or as sometimes combined, result of a prolonged restraint under irritating conditions, isolation, or the humiliation. Number 2. Gong Gong sounds fun, but it wasn't. Gong was the act of the permanent removal of a person's reproductive function. Male victims of this punishment were castrated. A very famous casualty was Sima Qin, the emasculated father of the traditional Chinese history writing. Gong punishments for female victims might have involved pounding the woman's abdomen with a stout stick to induce some kind of damage to the womb. Just thinking about this makes me physically ill. It was the second heaviest penalty in ancient China just after the death penalty. Indecent behavior in any way was originally the crime to be punished with castration. Later on, rebellion was the main misdoing to apply to this punishment. And it was often combined with collective liability and whole families were emasculated. Now I'd be pissed off if my brother did something and I had to face the consequences of it. And coming in at number one is death. Now this wasn't easy like the lethal injection today. Oh no. There were different varieties of death which they could choose from. This included strangulation, decapitation, boiling or grilling a person alive, courting, cutting the body into four pieces, tearing off an offender's head and attaching them to chariots, execution then abandonment of the offender's body in the local public market, and making literal mincemeat of a person's flesh and salting it. By the way, other methods of execution were also used and they couldn't be more gruesome than that. 
could they? The cruelty was deliberate and designed to cause maximum pain in the victims and their families, as well as to shock and deter others from committing similar crimes. The most serious punishment was death, and under Tang Law, there were 144 crimes that were punishable by strangulation, and another 89 crimes that were punished by decapitation, so it was common. Starting our list off at number 10, crucifixion. Most of the time when it came to crucifixion, the accused would be tied to their crosses, right? They weren't always nailed to it, and there's a bizarre reason why that was done. It was a Roman practice for some to be nailed, that's true of course, but it's next to impossible to find any remains from these ancient punishments because the nails of the crucified victims were looked at as powerful charms or an amulet, almost, I don't know. Again, this was the ancient world, so they loved harming others, but then they also believed in good luck and, and good karma at the same time, so you're like, Okay, sure. Some believe that they had healing properties, which is ironic considering what act they just performed with said nail. Know what I mean? It's like, hey, where'd you get that one from? Uh, that guy's arm, actually. Yeah, it's nice. In 1968, a team of builders were laying foundation for a new suburb in northern Jerusalem. Now, while digging, they found the remains of a foot with a nail still in it, still in the bone. Jehohanan was the first victim of crucifixion ever found in Israel. This was an important find. Now, the reason the nail was left in, well, experts guess, is because the nail was bent at the tip and nobody could get it out, which is horrible. Imagine seeing that scene. Ugh. Number nine, Dimnatio ad Bastias. Also known as killing by wild animals, this was a form of Roman capital punishment in which the accused was, well, you guessed, killed by wild animals in an arena. Now you may be thinking about gladiator at this point. This was a little different. This was about 80 years before that. The gladiators, they could defend themselves to some degree, but you know, those meeting their fate with this method, they were defenseless. They were tied to one spot or they were given a small weapon made of wood. It was an insult, really. This form of punishment was was seen in ancient Rome starting around the 2nd century BC. 80 years later, the Colosseum saw a similar practice, only then it was, you know, UFC. It was this big Colosseum, it was a public viewing, and they could fight back with tridents or nets, which I guess helps. I don't know, not really. Number eight, boat. Death by boat. What does that even mean? I don't even want to know what this is. Here we go. First described by Plutarch as a Persian torture technique, the accused, in this case, in the boat case, was stripped completely naked and then tied to two different boats. Now at this point, I'd already be unconscious. This is terrifying. The guilty was forced to drink milk and honey in large quantities until they were extremely ill. Now at this point, they would be bad enough to be on a boat in the hot sun, sick to your stomach, naked, but no. They just had to get a little more creative, right? At this point, honey was then spread on your actual body and then you were sent out in the middle of the water. Exposed to intense heat, insects that drank your blood, you would die of dehydration, hunger, or septic shock. All terrible ways to go individually, let alone all that happening to you at the same time while strapped to a boat. Let's move on before I'm sick. Number seven, peeling. This is the shortest one on our list here today and well, that's because there's not quite much to say about it. Peeling, just kind of like how you peel an orange, but instead, a person. Yeah, brutal, right? Hit that thumbs up for brutality. You wanted this, that's why you clicked it. Used by the Assyrians and then later by the Romans, those fancy Romans, the victim in this case was covered in hot water. Already a bad start. And then some monster would then take a blade, start out of your feet, and then slowly and surely just take little bits of you away. Now death, of course, depended on how much skin was removed and how extensive the wounds were. So it wasn't the same every time. Sometimes it was fast and other times it was really, really slow, which is horrible. Either way, come on, what is this, Game of Thrones? How how do you do this to a person? Number six, the bronze bull. Romans used this type of punishment and Saint Eustache was baked apparently in a bronze bull with his wife, all under the command of Emperor Hadrian. Now, however, the Catholic Church considers these stories to be completely untrue. So that little breath that you just did, it's okay, you can release that now. The odds that this one actually happened are quite slim. But then again, after that boat thing, who knows? It's worth mentioning, it probably happened once or twice. Because a very similar fate happened to Antipas of Pergamon during the persecution of Domitian in 92 AD. The bull was also used in 287 AD during Emperor Diocletian at the Pelagia of Tarsus. Now, did they bake anybody? Let's hope not, but they found one there, so I don't know. There's a lot of room on the inside, if you know what I'm saying. Number five, the breaking wheel. 
origins in Greece, but Rome still fancied a wheel or two, apparently. This method is a little much. Again, after what I've just said, you're like, really? This is weirdly the worst for me. I don't know. A naked victim, naked right off the bat, always naked. Why is everyone always naked? Can we just like have a guy with jeans on for like one show? The victim with widely spaced limbs was tied to a metal ring, a wheel, some would say, sure. Then the executioner, this big guy who you don't want to meet, he would come in and crush your body with a club, which, you know, the edges were covered with metal. Uh, a big hammer, really, that's what you can call it. Now, after crushing the limbs, the victim was placed in an upright position, okay, and then at that point, folks would watch, no one was working back then, folks would just hang out and watch all day as birds would consume what is left. Yeah, again, welcome to the ancient times. I'm gonna go throw up now. Number four, heel hauling. As somebody who is not a fan of water at all, this was a type of punishment that I can't even imagine. No, it sounds like something from Game of Thrones. It can vary depending on how bad the ocean is. Imagine that as a lead up. Eh, the ocean's bad, so should be pretty bad today. You're like, oh no, what's gonna happen? This punishment was reserved, of course, as you guessed, for sailors. Sailors at sea, a couple of naughty mateys. Now, it was first performed by the Dutch Navy in the late 16th century, but again, origins go all the way back to Rome because, you know, they're the OG, the, o the OG beaters, I guess. And what would happen was the accused were tied with rope and then dragged underwater from one end of the ship to the other. While many died or drowned, obviously, being flossed around a pirate ship covered in barnacles, it wasn't always fatal, which makes this worse somehow. I don't know. I don't want to live after that. Not always, but a good amount of time. It was probably the end of your line. Number three, strapado. Strapado sounds like an Italian artist, but it's definitely not. Don't try and look this one up on Google. You won't like it. It's creative, I'll admit, but all in the worst ways. It's an uncomfortable form of punishment, unlike others on this list. It doesn't end in death, purposely. In strapado, the guilty is strung up by the wrists behind the head. Now, at first, it doesn't sound that bad, but of course, it gets a little worse. The awkward angle at this point is pretty much guaranteed to cause dislocation of the shoulders, but if it doesn't do anything that's too bad, weights would be added. It. So then something would break, something would be out of place, and then you'd be broken for the rest of your life, which in my opinion is way worse than a death, a fast death. I'd rather that for sure. And finally, number one, the wooden horse. Yeehaw, we'll end on this one. This is pretty bad. This device was used all through history and different variations of it existed at different times throughout different parts of the world because the general concept was the same. It was a punishment meant to inflict a great deal of pain to, you know, down areas. The device was a wooden block, sort of, normally in the shape of a triangle with a point at the top, a very sharp, very sanded point right at the top there. That's where, you, that's where you'd have to sit, right there in that little triangle of death. Whoever was having the pain inflicted upon them would be tied up and then placed onto this block with a leg on either side, almost like a horse. From there, they would have weights tied to their legs in order to slowly lower them further and further onto this already very uncomfortable block. In later years, post-Roman times, the punishment would be inflicted at the same time as the person was being paraded throughout town. Again, another public event. I can't even watch UFC. I can't watch a guy perform an arm bar, let alone watch this. Are you kidding me? No, I'm gonna throw up. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have death in a cage. In every part of this video series, I've talked about how public all of these punishments used to be, and this one is certainly no exception. People of the past just really liked watching people die or have pain inflicted upon them. I'm not sure what that was about, but I'm just glad I was born in this time and not then because I would have been fainting every time I left the house. And not just because I had a cut that modern medicine wasn't around to fix. Anyway, death in a cage is, well, exactly what it sounds like. Essentially, this was just one method of execution that was extremely public, as they would strip the person down and lock them in an iron cage that was placed somewhere that everyone would be able to see. Basically, the condemned person would be locked in there with no food or water, and everyone would just watch them as they slowly died. Yeah. How messed up is that? In our number nine spot today, we have death by elephants. There's a lot of messed up punishments we've talked about in the last few weeks, but this one makes me extra angry because why do we need to include poor innocent animals in our terrible behavior? You know, execution by elephants was quite a popular method of capital punishment in a certain part of the world. The elephants would be used to crush, dismember, or just inflict pain on captives who were being publicly executed. This method was most commonly used by royalty because it 
was a way that they could use the elephants to signify both the ruler's power as well as their ability to control a wild animal. This practice began to die out in the 18th and 19th century as the parts of the world that used this method began to be colonized. Elephants were the chosen animal in part because of their size and strength, but also because of their intelligence, domestic ability, and versatility. Although bears and lions were more popularly used in other parts of the world, elephants had the ability to be trained to execute the person in a variety of different ways because they are so smart. I feel bad for the people who died like this, but I also feel bad for the elephants who were forced to take part in it as well. In our number 8 spot today, we have mud. In ancient times, like we know all too well at this point, people liked to watch other people die, but one of the most common favorites of the time was suffocation. During the medieval times, however, they liked to do this in their own special messed up way, and that was by using mud. Basically, according to historians, they would just throw criminals into a big thing of stinky mud and leave them there. This would eventually lead to their drowning or suffocation from the mud. Apparently, in medieval France, this cruel and unusual punishment was reserved specially for women who were unfaithful to their husbands. Yeah, I'm really glad now we can just do things like, I don't know, divorce? Just seems like a better option for everyone. In our number 7 spot today, we have Trial by Ordeal. This one is aptly named because it really was a whole entire ordeal, and one that I'm sure absolutely none of us would like to have been a part of. This foolproof ancient judicial practice was used as a test to determine whether someone was innocent or guilty. Spoiler alert, it was not in fact foolproof at all. In fact, it makes absolutely zero sense. Basically, the accused would be placed in the center of everyone, and then they would have severe pain inflicted upon them in a multitude of ways. If they survived the pain, they were innocent, and if they didn't, they were guilty. Like, what kind of insanity is that? Apparently there was a bunch of different ordeals people could be subjected to, like cold water, hot water, hot iron, really whatever option, they were all bad. And like, what an insane idea to test someone's innocence. I'm just saying, I know a lie detector is only 80 to 90% accurate, but I'll take that over this ordeal any day. In our number 6 spot today we have the ducking stools. This was a punishment used in 16th and 17th century England and New England, and it was usually a punishment that was reserved for women. This punishment was given to a woman for doing what was considered unwomanly, whatever that is supposed to mean. Apparently this included things like having an argument with their husband, fighting with their neighbors, gossiping, and backstabbing. Whoever made these rules had clearly never met a man because newsflash, everyone does literally all of those things, but hey, clearly the logic used in the past was, well, not logical. Basically, this punishment would see a woman being tied up to a stool and then dropped into a lake or stream over and over again. This was actually a punishment method that didn't usually end up in death, but that sounds like the worst consolation prize of all time. In our number 5 spot today, we have the wooden horse. This was a device that was used, and although different variations of it existed at different times in different parts of the world, the general concept was the same, and it was a punishment meant to inflict a great deal of pain. Basically, the the device was a sort of wooden block, normally in the shape of a triangle with a point at the top. Whoever was having the pain inflicted upon them would be tied up and placed onto the block with a leg on either side. From there, they would have weights tied to their legs in order to slowly lower them down onto the already uncomfortable block. In later years, this punishment would be inflicted at the same time as the person was being paraded through town, usually with other humiliating punishments being inflicted on them at the same time. This method would often leave the person injured and unable to walk without pain. In our number 4 spot today we have solitary confinement. This is a kind of punishment that still exists in our modern society, but it truly can be one of the worst punishments out there because of the kind of psychological distress it causes. Basically this form of punishment involves a prisoner living in a single cell with little to no meaningful contact with anyone else. The isolation that solitary confinement can create can be life altering for people. There are many stories of people being locked up for so long that they forget about their families. Some people have gone away to solitary confinement for so long, once they're let out, they no longer speak. 
Solitary confinement and the negative effects it has on a person is becoming a wider topic of conversation because of the effects on a person's mental well-being, and it's a common topic for a lot of human rights organizations. In our number three spot today, we have hamstringing. Okay, this one sounds terrible, but also just the visual this gives me in my head is enough to give me goosebumps. Hamstringing is a pretty simple concept, although extremely horrible and just disgusting, and it involves simply severing the hamstring tendons in the back of the thigh so as to incapacitate the victim. You know when you're watching basketball or football or whatever and someone tears a muscle in the game and it looks horribly painful? Yeah, this is like that, but so much worse because it's not just an accidental injury and instead someone is just being the jigsaw of the real world. Not only does this punishment restrict a person's movement greatly, but it also inflicts a great deal of pain as well, making it the double whammy of awfulness. In our number two spot today, we have the Iron Maiden. When I say those words, some of you might start thinking about the band, but we are talking about a very different, much more gruesome Iron Maiden today. The Iron Maiden was a popular instrument that was used in Europe in medieval times in order to inflict excruciating punishments on people. Basically, the Iron Maiden was like an iron cabinet that had large spikes inside of the doors. When someone was placed inside, some dark, twisted person could close the doors, which of course would subsequently impale the person on the inside. The doors could be closed either all the way to take the life of the person inside, or they could just be closed partially just to ensure that pain was inflicted without taking their life. Let's just hope the trooper inside doesn't have a fear of the dark. So basically, if you see any Iron Maidens lying around, especially one with the number of the beast, you should probably run to the hills. In our number one spot today, we have keel hauling. This is a word that I wish I could erase from my vocabulary as it has to do with one of the most terrible punishments I've ever heard of, but I guess we've talked about 30 of these already, so I should be used to it by now. The word for this punishment comes from the Dutch word keel hollen, which apparently means to drag along the keel, and that is exactly what this terrible method was all about. This punishment was usually reserved for sailors, and they would be stripped, tied, and suspended by rope from the mast of the ship, with weights tied to their legs. The rope would be looped beneath the ship so that once the tied up sailor is released, they'd be dragged under the keel of the ship. In the world of the most unsurprising news ever, this method had basically a 100% fatality rate. Wow, it's almost as if you put someone in a situation that threatens their life in multiple ways, they might not survive. How strange! Mm -hmm.